Hi, welcome to the virtual orientation for the 264BH J Flight SLX by Jayco. We're going to begin on the outside. First thing we'll come to is your front passenger storage compartment. Here you'll have access to the pass through compartment as well as the underbed storage. In here you will find your manual crank for your electric tongue jack and your manual crank for your stabilization jacks along with whatever treasures you also put in here. On the topic of your stabilization jacks we have one at each corner of the trailer. It's important to note that you should level the trailer fully before you engage the stabilization jacks. They should never be used to level your RV. From there, we'll take a look at your side marker light. The side marker lights you'll notice have what looks like an extra piece of plastic on it. This is actually a housing for a camera body for a rear view camera. They do not come included with the unit, however they can be purchased separately. And you can use a head unit inside your tow vehicle to monitor the sides on both sides and the rear of the vehicle while you're driving. So while the pre-wiring is there on both sides and at the rear for your monitor cameras. As we continue along the front, I'll make note of your battery storage area as well as your 30 pound propane bottle storage. I'll just take the cover off for you and we'll get a look at your dual 30 pound propane storage system. These two bottles are connected with a crossover regulator. What that means is currently the handle of the regulator is pointing this way to this tank. So that means it will draw from this tank first after this tank drops below a predetermined amount of pressure, it will automatically cross over and draw from the other 30 pound bottle. Now the pressure that it crosses over at is predetermined by the regulator and it isn't adjustable. This way on those cold nights if you're camping you don't have to come out and uh, switch the bottles over manually. Directly in front of the propane storage you will find your electric tongue jack. You'll see that you have a couple switches. One operates this nice loading light. And above that we have your switch for the power up and down of the jack. And the last thing we'll show you for your electric tongue jack is this rubber port at the top or stopper at the top. You pull that out and you're able to utilize the manual crank I showed you earlier in this hole. So if you're ever without power for any reason, you still have full operation of your tongue jack. Also on the front, before we move on, we'll make note of your safety breakaway switch. The loop end is attached to your tow vehicle. And in the event that the tow vehicle becomes separated from your RV, this pin will be pulled and engaging your trailer brakes. So if you ever notice that you've just hooked up and you go to pull and it feels like the brakes are stuck on or it's just not feeling right, I'd come back to this and just make sure that the pin is fully inserted into the housing. If it's not, push it in and see if that fixes your problem. Continue along. I'll just make quick note of the rear view camera housing on the off door side uh, marker light. And then we'll continue along. And the next thing that we'll come to will be your potable water or fresh water tank fill point. So this is where you put your drinking water or water that you want to use from your fresh water tank. You'd pump it in to your water system of your RV, pressurizing it just like it would be for your, for your home. And then you could use your water much like you would at home. The next thing we'll come to is your city water connection. Your city water connection is basically where you put the garden hose uh, from your campground or from your home. Uh, and much like uh, using the water pump uh, from your potable water tank, uh, once the garden hose is attached here and the water is turned on, it will pressurize the water system inside the RV 
and it will be usable just like the uh, water system in your home. Right next door, we'll take a look and see we have the venting for your refrigerator. It's important that this remain obstruction free so that max airflow can get through this vent. Directly below the venting for your refrigerator, we have your 30 amp power supply. This is what you would connect to the campground power. It is a 30 amp plug end, so the chances of you having a 30 amp plug end, plug end on the outside of your home is probably pretty slim, if not none. That's why we provide you with a conversion block that you can use to plug into the end of this cable. It will then plug into a regular 15 amp plug that you would see at the outside of your house. However, you may have some reduced functionality with the reduced amperage, namely your uh, air conditioner. Right next to that, we have your outdoor shower. And beside that, your uh, black tank flush valve. You'd hook your uh, garden hose up to here to assist in cleaning it out and flushing out your black tank. And directly below, speaking of black tank, we have the output for your black and gray tanks as well as the valve handles. We'll make note of your main input for cable or satellite TV for the RV. And as we come along to the rear of the trailer, we can see the housing for the rear view camera that would work in conjunction with the side view cameras. Again, these can be purchased separately. Also on the back, we have ladder access to the roof, which is always handy. Then as we come back onto the door side of the RV, this is where we'll find the outdoor access to your hot water tank. Your hot water tank has a couple important features, one being the pressure relief valve, and the other being the drain plug or drain cap. Uh, whenever you're opening or take, removing this drain cap or plug, always make sure that you open the pressure relief valve. If you don't, the amount of pressure that's built up in here will uh, shoot that cap or plug at you pretty hard. And if we slide over to the compartment right next door, we'll find a refrigerator for outdoor use, which is always nice and handy. But we will also see your inside access to your hot water tank. Now I have removed this previously via three Red Robertson screws and you can see the back of your hot water tank. You can also see that there are a couple of valves here. Currently this valve is running in this direction, pointing towards the, into the hot water tank. And with valves that would generally indicate that we are now running water into, into the tank. If we were to switch it the other way so that the handle points in line this way, that switches all flowing water to loop past the hot water tank. Now we would also have to turn the hot water valve handle as well and now we are totally bypassing your hot water tank. Why would you do that? Well, you do that during winterization so you don't have to buy extra antifreeze and fill up your whole hot water tank with antifreeze. So as we move on, we'll see that we have a couple other things outside under the awning here. We have an output for your cable or satellite, as well as a 120 volt GFCI protected receptacle and a mounting place for a TV making it really easy to mount an additional TV outside underneath your awning if you choose to do so. But also note, at either end of the awning, in the head of the awning, we have speakers. Those speakers can be used in conjunction with the stereo inside the unit, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now that we've covered the outside, let's move inside and take a look at what we can find. After we step inside, we'll turn right around and we will look down at the unit fire extinguisher. I always like the placement right inside the door. That makes it readily accessible inside if you need it while cooking or outside as well. And if we look just to our right, you'll notice we have a propane carbon monoxide detector. See at the moment there is a solid green light that would indicate the system is working properly. There's a button right here that we can press to test the system. I recommend pressing and testing it every six months during daylight savings time at the same time that it's recommended that you change the batteries in your smoke detector.
So when you press the button, you'll hear a series of loud beeps. The light will change from green to red. And once it's all done, it'll stop making noise. And the green light will go back to a solid green light, indicating that the system is functioning fully and properly. Okay, I'm going to turn, take a look at the bedroom. You'll see in the bedroom, we have the mounting bracket already placed on the wall as well as connection points for a cable or satellite and 120 volt power. And if we sit down on the bed here and take a look at your emergency exit quick, show you, press down on the black tab first, push the red handle over, it'll pop out of the black tab. Then you can push the handle all the way out, fully out of the vehicle. Once fully out, you can grab this tab on the screen, pull the red tab, the screen will come out, and then you can escape to safety. Also, while we're here, we'll take a look at the pre-wired uh, solar connection point. This unit is pre-wired for solar, which means the uh, connection points are pre-existing. All the wiring has been done. They have a location marked here for the hedge unit inside. And this is where it would be installed. The uh, under bed storage, the bed is supported by, by props, which is good, makes it a lot easier to get in stuff in and out of the storage. Now as we come back to the main area, we'll make note of your sofa here. This sofa does fold flat into another usable sleeping space. At the moment though, we'll take a look at the unit GFCI. If the plug has been tripped, you'll see the red light come on like this, indicating that it is not functioning properly. You can reset it by pressing the top black button, and then you'll see the red light goes away. The plug is now functioning properly. Something that you might find if this has been tripped would be any plugs near water, so a counter plug here, any plug in the bathroom, or any of your outside plugs. They would most likely be on the load side of GFCI, which means when this is tripped, they will no longer work. However, when you come in and press the reset, all of those receptacles should now be functioning properly. And just as a quick aside, as I told you earlier, we had a conversion lock for your 30 amp plug-in. And this is it right here. So also in this area of the RV, we have your uh, indication panel where you can find the battery levels as well as fresh black and gray tank levels and then you have switching for your water heater on gas and electric and your water pump we'll see your cooktop and stove always make sure before you light your elements on the top that you open the glass top fully as if you try to light this with that down you will shatter the glass also before you leave after you're, when you're packing up Always make sure this is in the down position as well. This just helps to ensure that the glass cooktop doesn't break. Now in order to light your cooktop here, or your burners, you would turn each burner knob individually to the light position, and then turn your sparker knob. Each one of these work in the same way, and your stove will work in the same way as well, with one small exception. First, always open your stove when you're lighting. Turn this to the light position, as I showed you earlier with the burners. Once in the light position though, the difference is you must press and hold the knob in while turning the sparking knob. So for the burners, turn to light position, turn the sparking knob for it to light. For your stove, Turn it to the light position, push and hold the knob in while you turn the sparking knob. Okay, we're going to slide on over to our left and take a look at your refrigerator. This refrigerator currently that in this unit operates as an automatic unit only. And what that means is it does operate on gas or electricity. However, there is no options for you to select. It does it internally on its own. 
So it will automatically choose electricity unless there isn't any present. In that case, it will automatically switch to use gas. The main difference is we were just unable to tell it to use gas or tell it to use electricity. Before we get up here, we'll take a look at your load center or power center. This is where you would find breakers, much like you'd see in your house, and they function pretty much the same way, and your fuses, like you might see in your automobile. Now these fuses do have a red LED light that will light up to indicate that the circuit has been broken or not functioning properly, the most likely case being a blown fuse. Earlier I'd shown you the outside storage with your fridge and the access to the hot water tank. An alternative way to get to that storage and to the back of the hot water tank is from underneath your bunk. You can see the daylight coming in through there. That is the door that I showed you earlier. And that right there is the back of your hot water tank that I already showed you before. Also, while we're under here, we'll just take a minute to show you that there is a secondary emergency exit in the bunk area. It operates much the same way. And I would suggest just making sure any kids that are sleeping back here have a general idea of how to use it. Have a sink area before entering the bathroom. Pretty standard bathroom. Has the skylight really brightens up the bath area as well as a vent in the bathroom. Your thermostat is a capacitive touch button meaning that it's, it's not mechanical you don't actually have to mechanically press it in it's just a very light touch to cycle through the options you have your fan your AC and your heat and then you can cycle through a high or low option or an auto option on the fan settings. I will say that if you have the furnace set to come on using a high fan, it will use the reefer fan or your air conditioning fan to complete that to give it the extra volume and air. That doesn't mean that the reefer or the AC is actually cooling unit, it just simply uses the fan to achieve a higher volume of uh, air. So if you find that your AC fan is blowing, and it can be quite loud and you don't want that, uh, come into the settings, hit mode till you see fan and just make sure it's on auto. Take a look at your stereo and you'll notice that we have Bluetooth, HDMI, an auxiliary port and uh, USB charging as well as DVD playing capability. We'll also note that there are one, two zones on this unit Zone one would be to play your radio inside the RV and zone two will play your radio outside the RV on the speakers I showed you earlier. You can play either zone by itself or together. It's up to you. Also in this area, we have a 12 volt charging point and you'll see that we have a signal booster for your antenna. With the signal booster on, it will mess up your cable or satellite connection. So if you're connecting via cable or satellite, make sure that is off. Okay, last couple things. Just want to briefly talk about your AC. When the thermostat is on and your AC is running, you have these baffles here. With the baffles closed, you will force all the air to these ports that are located throughout the trailer. If the baffle is open, however, it will drop most of the cold air directly right here. Just something to keep in mind. We have to show you where the water pump is. So it's underneath your sink. And to get access to it, you can either remove the drawer here, or you'll see I can get access right beside. There's your water pump. And you can see the valve there, much the same as the valve in the hot water tanks that I showed you. Currently this valve is positioned to draw from the fresh water tank in the unit as it's pointing back towards the water pump. If you wanted to try to winterize or use the fill tube here, then you'll see that I've changed the valve position and now it is pointing in line with that fill tube. We'll turn it back as it does not need to be winterized, nice and warm out finally. 
So this is all set up for summer use. That way, if you're camping somewhere that doesn't have a garden hose that you can attach to your city water connection, you will need to fill your freshwater tank, so then you can use your water pump to draw from the freshwater tank. That does it for our virtual orientation today. I hope you found it informative and useful. If I missed something that was important to you, please give us a call and we'll do our best to make sure that we answer every question that you might have. Thank you.